Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. Today we're in sunny Grimsby at the home of Bacon Engineering, a company that's been established for 123 years. And we are with the fifth generation of the business, David Bacon and Darren Glue. And we're going to have a fantastic machine shop tour. Thanks for having us today at your fantastic facility. I'm really looking forward to have a walk around and, and learn a little bit more about what you do. Uh, but before we start and we have the tour, can you just firstly tell us a little bit more about the history of the company and the heritage and how you started? So we're 123 years old. We started in the trolling industry fishing. Uh, we now have moved into renewables. Uh, we do work with the uh, carbon capture and storage facilities. Um, we offer drone services. So from a, a very, very um, traditional uh, industry, we've moved into you know, the renewables and the modern sector. What about some of the components that you manufacture? I see that you've got a selection behind you there. Can you explain some of the parts that you make? I'll try, there's a wide range. So what you can see here are a number of different components. We go from bracketry through to pins. Um, we have axle for a um, miniature railway. We've got uh, hinges for security door systems. Uh, we've got some bearing covers. What are the largest components that you can make? So anything on the new lathe, we can do up to a five meter length. Uh, and on the borette, we can do up to a 1.2 diameter um, facing. So Darren, you've got three uh, milling machines here, one being the, the, the LR. Um, why have you chosen XYZ? They've been a very reliable and, and, and um, consistently supportive partner. Um, they've helped us from a point of view of both uh, service and keeping the machines up and running, but also keeping us abreast of any new technology uh, that's coming out into the market. I mean, there's, there's another, another SMX 5000 that's being set here. Do you know what components being made here? So at the moment, this, uh, the guy's working on a particular plate uh, for one of our customers, um, and that will be used in one of their manufacturing processes on one of their machines. So this is the milling department, and we're going to be touching on fabrication later on in, in this show, but we've also got a turning department around the corner here. Can you, can you take us through, please, yeah, and, sure. and, and show us what kind of parts that you're making? Yeah, this is, these are actually parts that go with some of the bracketry that we've seen on the, uh, the bench earlier. Um, so these are part of a security door system that we provide for one of our customers. What do you think of the XYZ laves that you're using uh, at Bacon? Yeah, I really like them. They're, they're sort of a bridge between a full CNC job and like a manual sort of. For one off or two offs like we do now, I think they really are ideal. Perfect. Thank you very much. So we've got, got a nice little uh, turning department here, Darren, um, and, and this looks like there's a lot of work going through um, that section there. Now, moving on here, we've got an absolute beast, a, a beast of a lathe. So is this one of the latest investments? Yes, it is, yeah. This is our, uh, our latest investment in uh, really what is cutting edge technology from a turning perspective. This lathe is fairly unique and bespoke to us. Uh, it gives us the opportunity to um, turn up to five metres in length, which is fairly substantial in the, uh, in the sector. Um, and also from a diameter point of view, uh, we're talking about upwards of a metre in diameter of the um, capacity of the machine. So what type of components would you look to machine on this type of lathe? So it would predominantly be, as you see now, a roller or uh, a shaft um, for a whole different wide range of sectors um, from food manufacturing right through to, uh, with this particular element, it's going off to a chemical processing plant. Brilliant. Now I'm going to try and grab the operator. I can see he's been programming on the machine. Um, John, I met you earlier. Yep. Um, looks like a fabulous machine. How, how are you, I see you're programming. How, are you, how have you been finding the programming? Uh, it's really, really easy. It's conversational. Uh, you get sort of 3D simulations of everything, so it's really, really easy um, and intuitive to program. So it took us no time at all to um, pick it up. And, and how are you finding the machine tool in general? You're doing some very large parts on it, you know. How is it coping with some of the larger parts? Yeah, great. We're really happy with it. It's a really powerful machine, and it's done everything we've asked of it so far. And this is the XL730, I believe? It is, yeah, XL730 by 5 metres. So XYZ, how have they supported you on this project? Uh, really, really helpful. They came in, did a um, training on site, so specific to the machine. 
um, answered all of the questions. Um, yeah, we was up and running uh, yeah, pretty quickly once it was uh, commissioned. Now, parts such as this, you were making them before. How were you making them before? Uh, on an old manual lathe, which has been in the company since 1965. So we'd, we'd certainly had money's worth out of that. Uh, so it was time to invest in something new and that was, you know, give a bit more flexibility, um, make more complex components. And the beauty of this machine, we can use it on big stuff and really small stuff just as easily. And how has it transformed the business since introducing this large CNC lathe to the business? Uh, well, it's it's taken away the um, the need to have somebody that you know who served the time on manual machine, old school trick tips and tricks, doing uh, manual stuff. Um, you know, the, the lads who use the smaller prototype stuff can come on here and just as easily make something you know as big without fear of you know tapers and things like that you get on manual machines. And what about the accuracy and repeatability? How's that benefited you now? It's great. You, you put a cut on and you, you can trust the machine. If you, you put a two mil cut on, you know it's going to take two mil and it'll do the same next time and the time after. And you, you're not constantly checking and it, it saves you lots of time. You, you can trust the machine to actually do what, what it's saying it's doing. And has it got the torque and the power for the harder materials? Yeah, we're yet to put a cut on that it won't take uh, yeah, really rich material off. Good to hear. Thank you very much, uh, John. Now, so that, I mean, it sounds like it's a success already, Darren. Absolutely. It gives us so much flexibility and uh, offers such a wide range of components that we can now machine. Um, you know, despite its length, we, you know, we can manufacture some very small components. Obviously, it's more effective uh, use of the machine if we're manufacturing something, as you see now. But yeah, it's, it's brilliant for the business. We've got some old manual machines. So I'm sure this is in touch with, you know, your heritage and, and, and your tradition. And, and I'm sure our Colin Griffiths um, would remember some of these. He's, a, he's of that kind of uh, age. Um, but talk us through some of this old machinery and, and why you've still got it on site. So we, we, we affectionately refer to this whole area as our heritage corner. Now, you, what you're looking at at the moment is the Lombardo. Um, now, this, uh, this lathe is, is, is critical to the business. Um, you can see we've got a component on there now. It's simply not possible for us to um, machine that uh, particular component and it on, on any other piece of kit. So a very large swing diameter on the Lombardo. I've never heard of, of a Lombardo machine before, but it does sound Italian, so I should know about it. Now, we've got a, a, horizontal, a horizontal boring machine here, and it, it still seems like it's in, in use. It's, uh, um, it what, what, what part? are you making on it? So these parts are some um, rings that are going into a, a, a chemical processing plant again um, but they form part of a steam ring um, so it's about the way in which um, materials are flowing through uh, 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 chemical uh, uh, fluid. Perfect. Now last machine here a pillar drill um, does this still get used? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. We've got a six foot reach on it. Um, so not used very often, but being able to buy something with that reach now is, is now and impossible. So very useful to us. You've got lots of capabilities in your machining department. I think it's time to go over to the fabrication department now. David, I've just had a tour of the machining department. Um, now we're in the fabrication department. Why, why do you offer both? capabilities why is it so important to you guys at Bacon Engineering to do so? Historically we always had a single welder fabricator uh, but it became apparent there's more and more work available so we had an opportunity to, to build that and, um, and, and, and since we took that opportunity it's gone from strength to strength uh, and we've now got two equivalent sized departments um, which gives us a real broad solution and is, is a real strength of ours. Lots of noise going on in here, lots of sparks being created. Uh, let's walk, take a walk through. I've been noticing a lot of these drill type components on the floor. What, what are these and what are you doing to them, David? So these are augers. Um, they're from the construction industry, uh, from a big, big customer of ours. Effectively, they, they bring them to us, they're worn down, they've got imp imperfections and we sort of straighten them out and do a lot of hard facing and repair work. So steady flow of those keep, keep, really keeps us busy. Uh, but basic big big screws, big drills, pieces for you know to, to drill out uh, you know down for, for building projects. We've got some sparks going on here. What's the guy producing here, David? So this is not the way we'd normally want to do a job, uh, but due to the timelines we've got, we're having to hand cut out this um, the, the, the 20 mil sheet uh, in order to basically we're reverse engineering a, a, a part for for one of our big customers. We've not got the time to draw and get laser profiles cut, 
So we're doing it a bit old school, but again, it shows the sort of the, the, the breadth of what we can do um, you know, when, uh, you know, when we really need to react for a customer. And you're not just welding and, and fabricating, you're kind of using the machining capabilities um, as well, aren't you, um, to make parts that are, are using both kind of technologies. Absolutely, I mean, that, that's a perfect job that, that, that's in front of us there. That's going to be a probably sort of 70% fabrication, but we, we need to machine various components to go into that. So again, it just gives it having both departments, you know, that both services under, under one under one sort of, uh, on one site is a real strength of ours. Latest innovations at Bacon Engineering, you've got the machining section, you've got the fabrication section, but you're also being involved with new innovations such as drones. Can you tell our audience a little bit about this side of the business? Well, it's something we see as a really exciting development uh, for the business. So uh, the, the whole sort of concept is we can do drone surveys of whether it's high structures, both onshore or offshore, you know, particularly with the opportunity within, within renewables and wind turbines. Uh, but not only can we survey and provide 3D modeling or, or sort of um, complex sort of um, diagrams, etc., we can then provide an engineering solution to, to help fix or build whatever structures are required, whether it's metal access works or we, we can, and part of that we can also do laser scanning of components, which we can feed straight into our CNC lathes. Uh, to replicate so it's a really exciting um, new sort of step that we're taking and one that we think there's a lot of uh, a lot of potential value in. So what are your expectations for the for the future David? Well, I think uh, as, as Darren's probably mentioned there's a lot of exciting um, developments within our region from the renewables to carbon capture projects um, to freeport status for the Humber uh, and development of, of the docks within the area for, for imports exports so there's a lot happening regionally and, and we see there's, there's huge opportunities for someone like ourselves to be key parts of that supply chain. So how important is it for you guys to offer an all-in-one solution to your clients? Does this win you more business? It's, it's an essential part of the offering that we, that, that we have. Uh, you know, it's, it, we're a one-stop shop for a really broad spectrum of, of, of engineering solutions and we, we think that makes us quite unique and, uh, and is a real strength of ours you know, for, for, for both you know, within our town and region. So, uh, it, and it's something we want to, to, to develop as well as far as the breadth of the offering. So it's, I think it's just the start of that journey. It's an exciting time for the business.